Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here and welcome to episode number 18 of my Liverpool Youth Academy project in FIFA 14 career mode. Hopefully you're enjoying it so far, second season is getting under the way from here, transfers, the first league match of the season may be coming in the next episode I believe, so not too far away, so hopefully you enjoy that and we can get off to a good start I hope anyway, but who knows what may happen right here, getting rid of players I don't want. Jose Reina going to be going. Unfortunately, he's just aging. and He's going to decline from here, unfortunately. We've got some Youth Academy players to the first team. So that's going to be the high point of what you're going to see right here. Going to check them out. But look at this guy here, John Richards. 68 overall for a 16-year-old. He's got decent physical attributes if you compare them to other Youth Academy players this year. They've been very, very low. So he could actually be a pacey player in the future. He's got very, very nice technical attributes. Hopefully, we can play him and they can develop really well in the future. He's got the high attacking work rate and low defensive work rate. That is absolute perfect for a striker. Love that. And then we got Hugo Henriquez, who's got five-star skill moves, but then on the other side of the spectrum, he's got one-star weak foot. So I have to make sure to not pass with his left foot or shoot as well. But again, what I mean, physical attributes really, really poor if you compare that to John Richards. Really just showcase a big difference. And he's 17 as well. That's Richards is going to... I'm really excited to use him, to be honest. And with a striker, there's less really risk with playing them like for a young player like not as good player playing as a striker because yeah if you have good defenders playing good midfield you can still defend well strikers don't defend really so you can kind of play them a bit more so hopefully you understand that Manuel Adolfo who was very promising throughout last season just checking out his updates that's what I mean he was showing he was a good player in terms of his potential and that but again physical attributes really poor when I looked at that I felt I didn't want to play him I don't want to play someone with those kind of attributes who would like so I might have to send him out on loan. So those kinds of players I'll be hopefully sending out on loan. But I don't think other teams will want them if they haven't played a league match before. So you've got to show something with them. That's what I mean. You've got to give them chances so other teams might get interest and loan them out in January. So that's what we'll be trying to do. Maybe play them in Capital Cup games, or Capital One Cup, sorry, or FA Cups. Um, those Cup games is going to be just used for playing young players. I hope anyway. It just depends on the balance of the team and all of that kind of stuff. Because then there's champions and league matches. Yeah, champions league and league matches where I want to play my best team and best youth players. Like John Richards, he's the best one I'll be playing. You can just see from his attributes, 16 and 68. So that's all to be said about that. You know, that is obviously really, really good. So do you think that's a good idea to play those younger players in the cup games? But I think I the first couple cup games I didn't just... Because I wanted to get my game style going, know how I want to play with this 3-5-2. And yeah, it's just generally increasing. So we've got some transfer listed players as well. And yeah, I think there'll be in the next episode when I move into like the deadline day. I'm going to be making some deadline day deals. You're going to see who they are. I want to swap my players for another player. Not so using my money. I might do that for some players. But yeah, I'll be try to swap the players. You can get good deals done. So with a player that's aging or a player that's not really going to increase and he's not a first team player like Asadi and that. And even Aga, I'm going to try and sell Aga for or maybe swap him for a younger type. But that's good enough first team ability. That's what I mean. Uh, to get into the first team. That's one of the biggest things I like to do. Well, it's actually, I've never done that before. I've never done the swap deals, but now I've gone more into it. And again, that's another way to keep your interest up and hopefully you think they're good deals. You see Johnny Richards coming up. He's coming near the first team. He's ready. He's near the top of the reserves. And I just wanted to put him in uh, pre-season. Uh, you think like guys like Suarez, Suarez is not going to, like he's, I don't think he's going to increase anymore. He's what, 27 or going to be 28 this season. So I don't see him increasing, even though I swapped him for Sturridge in that one. But Richards, he's crucial. So we move out to a five-star team now. That was quick. But still, I believe we have a lot of room to improve in terms of uh, competing with Man City, Chelsea, and the like. I'm not going to mention all those top teams. You just, you know what I want to say. So sorry if I miss your team. Uh, here, Mignolet. I really cannot believe how much teams are interested in him. Like, you'll see so many transfer action for him, but I want to keep him because my other goalkeepers aren't up to scratch right now. But I will be countering, trying to make some teasing offers. And again, Sturridge, offers being made for him. I don't want to sell Sturridge because he's a pacey player. He's going to help us off the bench, hopefully, uh, getting some key goals, showcasing his ability. He'll be such an impact off the bench because I do want to start John Richards. Because if I do start him for the majority of the season... I've already said it previously, but then his growth can be really good. He could get to 80 in per, like maybe two seasons or three seasons, uh, depending how he develops. But I have to play him consistently. He cannot rot in the reserves. And I might play him for the first half of the season, then actually loan him out in the second half of the season so he can get that two-way growth. And that actually happens in the game. If you loan them out in January, they grow even more. 
So yeah, that's just my thoughts on that. They grow even more if you send them out on loan in January, but give them some playing time in the first half of the season. So that's something you may see, like I mentioned before, also to get teams interested. So no doubt, if I put John Richards on loan, because I have been playing him right now, other teams will be interested for sure. If I put him for loan, teams will be interested for sure because I cannot wait to show you what he can do. Or who knows, he may fail and do bad. I want to keep you surprised with that. And another youth player might come up and score some good goals. Who knows? you got Henriquez with the five-star skills. Who knows what I can do with him, but the physical attributes really turn me off. You saw there all the older types that I feel could not increase and weren't amazing players for the team, I wanted to sell. Like They're not that high, high level. I want to get players that has potential to be over 80. And if they're not that, I want to sell them. I just, yeah, I don't feel they can make an impact. But Agger's 83, I know, but he's 29. He's going to be 30 going into next season. And then he's going to start declining and his value will start declining. And I want to make the most of his value right now to get a maybe a mid-70s younger type, like a 20, 21-year-old who has potential to be mid-80s or something. That's what I want to do with my actual transfers of not Youth Academy players. You're going to see Youth Academy players come to the first team, and then I'm probably going to make signings from uh, maybe from 19 to 24-year-olds in that gap, because then they can at least have five years at the team. That's what I go in my head. I want to sign a guy that can be part of the project I'm going for with the five years. I just say five years because I feel that's the realistic amount I can do. And people say, you've never done something that long, definitely. But look right now how fast I'm uploading my videos. If I keep this up until FIFA 15 is out, I'll definitely get to five seasons, if not more. So yeah, that's the kind of plan I'm going with, a five-year plan. And within that five years, my plan, I guess I'll talk about what my plan is for it because I haven't really said it. I have a five-year plan, but I haven't really said what it is. As you can see, uh, I don't have much in my U squad now. I'm just getting the highest possible. If you're not good enough, you're not going to be that high 80s potential or more you're gone, <laughs> you're going to another team. So yeah, that's my kind of, my plan is in five seasons to have a team that can compete and I can call myself the best team in the world. So that's what I've got to see. Like John Richard, you saw him before. He's going to be a player that's going to be high in the 80s. That's why I plan for him to be. But the development of that has to be in this season. I have to play him now. Sure, it might plague results. Like you saw last season with Scuffet playing him in games. I know he didn't increase, but he's probably going to increase when he gets a bit older. That's how goalkeepers increase in the game. First, like Before the 18, they don't really increase. But after that, they start to increase a bit more. So yeah, with John Richards, if I play him and the other ones, I'm not even talking about the other guys at the minute because their physical attributes are really poor. So I don't want to risk playing them. No doubt it will affect results even more so than Richards would. Like I said, he's a striker, so he won't... He won't really impact in our results as much in terms of conceding goals. He'll help in scoring goals, I hope. And if he does, uh, I, I don't know if you watched my Manchester United career in Football Manager 2014. I played this guy, Pedro Fernandes, at 15, and he did really well for me. Um, not the best player in my team, but he was young and he increased well. So that's what I'm going to try and do with Richards. Of course, it's different in FIFA because you actually control your players and you have to actually play well for every single game. You have to be, you have to keep your head in the game. So that's what i got to do. And I have that thing. I want to play those players, but I actually want to do well with them. Like, when I'm playing now, I'm so... Sorry if there's background noise. There's My microphone picks up everything, and there's, like, cars not too far away. So, sorry about that, but there's nothing. It's out of my control. I'm unsure if you can hear it or not, but still, yeah. Um, that's probably I'm looking, something I'm looking to change in the future, depending how my YouTube grows. I don't, yeah, I don't really want to talk about it at the minute, but, yeah, I'm, like, moving, like, houses and that, but we'll just see how it goes in the future. But, anyway, I'm not talking about that. Uh, yeah, I want to play John Richards because... Oh, oh, yeah, I want to talk about how I was playing. I was going to talk about that, wasn't I, uh, before I got disrupted by cars. So, um, anyway, what I was going to say, when I'm playing the game, I'm really excited about it. I'm really trying my hardest to get results. Even if sometimes I may lose, it's just something that happens in FIFA. You can't win every single game. Like I try my best to win. Like I hope you get that. Like I try so hard. Like Sometimes you might not understand it because I don't show the matches. Like I don't play live or something. But I try my hardest. Like my heart is beating fast. I feel the pressure. It's so hard. Like not hard. Well, yeah, it is hard, I guess. But I feel I feel a lot of pressure while I'm playing. Because if I don't win, like I'm going, you go down in the table. Of course, when you lose a game or something, and the pressure is on even more for the next match, and my heart beats even faster. Like I feel so much pressure when playing. Because being a big team, you have pressure to win the majority of games. So I feel pressure to win every single time. So I just want to get that to you like how I'm playing and if anyone else is the same when you're playing do you have that pressure I suppose you don't make I have more pressure because I make videos on YouTube like if you lose you don't really care as much as I would in my view if you don't make videos because you're not showcasing it to the world of YouTube uh, in the FIFA community and if you do bad you get 
you bet you get murdered in the comments and, and that was hard for me at some times that's why i'm really trying hard to improve probably for that reason because if i win you can only talk about the positives can you you can't really talk negatively negatively sorry you can't talk you can't talk about negative stuff if i'm winning that's what i basically mean that's the biggest pressure for me if i'm winning i, I see in my head i think in my head no one can say anything negative about me if i'm winning games and if they do, I can say, just look at my results, and there you go. But that's what I mean. I have so much pressure when I'm playing the games. I'm not sure if any of my heart, like I said, my heart beats so fast. So much pressure, especially when I'm winning like a 1-0 or something, like to not concede that late goal. They're the worst, I'm sure you would know. But um, yeah, leave in your comments if you're the same. If you make videos, do you feel a pressure to win games? And if you lose, do you feel, what do you feel when you lose or when you're losing? Do you feel more pressure? Or yeah, I just want to get your feedback because I try my hardest in games. I try my best. And if I don't win, if I don't win games is out of my control and I do my best. I do my very best all the time. I'm sure I told you. So yeah, just leave your thoughts on that. What I've talked about, like in terms of being the pressure being on me how do you feel about that but anyway uh, i'll move into the sim games and these are the only games i'm going to be simming for the season the pre-season games i always sim them but you know last season i simmed towards the end of the season just to get to the point where i am now because i'm enjoying this so much where i am right now editing these videos so yeah um i i won't be simulating games anymore ever unless i'm just so frustrated at the game who knows that's when i oh yeah when i sim in the first season i was frustrated so Anything can happen, but the games here, uh, we're playing some younger players like Scafe as goalkeeper. Hopefully, he does increase. Ideally, I'll probably look to loan him out in January, but I have to keep one. Obviously, we have two goalkeepers, and that's the thing. If I, I need goalkeepers, I get in my U squad now. They have to be a really high quality for me to keep them. We've got Scafe and Negrao as well, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully, enjoy this episode. I talked about my transfers. I talked about the pressure of winning in FIFA for me. Uh, drop your comments if you feel similar league objective to win it wow <laughs> um yeah hopefully you enjoy this episode like it if you did and i'll see you guys next time